Right, fuck it. Let's do this. Hang on, let me just close the door. It's a bit cold. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to sleep, so I might as well spend it doing something useful. So I've had an idea, uh, which I was started doing here. It is Wednesday. Well, it's Thursday now. <laughs> Um, it's when, yeah, okay, technically it's Wednesday night, all right. Should I put the races on? I guess I should put the races on, shouldn't I? Find the button for it. No, it's not the right button. Five seconds, that's pretty good for you. Yeah. Right, so my idea is to get the maps working. Um, I'm just reading something in the Z80 channel. That is just, it's like that, it's like that. All right. <clears throat> so I've got these maps. Basic and as a source, these are just, just a test map at the moment. But the problem is, is these maps are probably let me turn flexigrid on. Flexigrid is set them flexigrid settings at 2012, I think. There we go. So, I mean, this should be enough to do the test that I want to do anyway. Um, but basically, the character set is gonna, is not going to be enough to do all of these different maps with all the other things. Let me show you the, the GitHub stuff. Uh, oh, that's something else that hurt my ears. So this is the uh, uh, the Creative Commons version of Technod, which is available on GitHub. So you could probably use this project, um, Andy, for the for the map stuff. Um, but just to show you the, the text maps. So let me open that in the meantime. Hopefully that opens with a black background. Yeah, it does. Okay, so this is this is all the tiles I used in the game. Um, and there's way more than I'm gonna be able to fit into into this character set. I'm early today. Yeah, I was just I, I can't sleep, so I thought I might as well I've, I've had this on my mind for two days, so I thought I might as well have a go at it. So um yeah, so anyway, let me just turn this off. Just realized I've got that running as well. It's not going to help my bandwidth at all. Stop, please. There we go. So, um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm not too concerned about the big things, but all of these, these pieces here, um, I need to fit into a character set. And obviously, we're using some for particles. We're using these ones here for particles. Uh, we're using some for character bullets. We're using some for text and numbers for the HUD. 
Well, mm. does it sound echoey? Well, I'm echoey, or... Yeah, this mean it's my pistol. Um, let me double check my... What's the acceptance? Uh, okay, let me close that. I might disappear for a second. Berkeley. Uh... Oh yeah, where's it getting that? I don't know where it's getting that from. Yeah, my microphone isn't showing up for some reason. How about now? Is that better? I think that should be better. I think it was coming through my camera. I need to get a I need to get a better lead for I think the lead's a bit faulty on my thing. It's been bent so many times it's it's a bit shaky, so um yeah, so anyway, my plan is basically to keep an index of um, of which characters have been drawn. So let's say we draw this screen. This is this is the characters needed for this screen. So I I basically grab these from a larger character set. So I'm gonna have a character set that's a thousand and twenty four bytes. Um, and I'm gonna fill it with the characters needed to draw this screen. And then I'm going to remember this is my index, this, this yellow one here. And then when I want to move to this screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use cartridge loading to load in this screen in a 16-bit format. So instead of characters being 8, eight bits, they're going to be 16 bits. And that means that they're going to point to characters in a larger character set. So this is going to be loaded from cartridge into memory very quickly. And then we're going to... We're going to Basically, for every row that gets drawn, every column that gets drawn, so let's imagine we're going from here to here. Um, the screen is going to shift over by one column at a time. And as it shifts over, each column that it draws is going to work out which characters it needs to draw those, and it's going to put them into the character set here. Um, we'll use a ring buffer as well, so when we get to this point here, it's going to jump back to the beginning. Um, with the exception of the space, we'll, we'll leave the space um, because there's plenty of those, so we'll we'll just ignore any time we see that value, we'll just ignore it. Um, and then hopefully by doing that, what I can do is, once this screen is is uh, is moved off this off completely, and this screen is on, the character set will still have the characters from the last screen, but it will also have all the characters from the new screen. Um, and then we do the same again. So if we move back this way, we load the new screen in. Uh, and do it that way. So, uh, I'm I'm hoping this will work. So I, I want to leverage the the, the power of the um, cartridge to do this as efficiently as possible. So the first thing I want to do is just do a check by um, creating a larger character set. Actually, it really doesn't matter about the character set. Um, but the way I'm going to do this is I've created these two new macros um, yesterday. I think I created these uh, for my load. And what these allow me to do is load specific data into a bank. So um, I did. I started doing it one way, but I'm going to go a different way about it. So what I'm going to do is into the very last bank, and a bank is eight kilobytes. I'm going to load my character set, and this is going to be the the um, the, the 1024 character set. So uh, I'm going to put everything in this 16 bit folder for now. Um, early morning stream, yeah. Yeah, welcome, guys. Let me give you all some points for, for joining. I have to be a little bit quieter than normal because um, I don't want to wake her up. So, so I won't be drinking. Oh, the two cities not on. All right, let me sort that out. No, I did mean to turn it on. I, I, it's just it was such an impromptu thing. I didn't really think about it. So there you go. It's on there.
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load the character set into that space now. Um, I'm going to export a, a special version of the character set, so I'm going to put 1024 bytes in here. Um, let's make it, there we go. So, and I'm going to export that, so hopefully this will export. I know it's, I mean, I could probably just do with the new menu, but for now, I just want to make sure this is all working. So, let's export the character set. I'm going to put this in here, pull it charts up in, which is already in there. So, let's just place that. So, then the other thing I was thinking is, well, do I really need tile data? So, I've looked at the, um, the specs for Checkanoid and Checkanoid has 50 screens or just over 50 screens. It's, it's going to be somewhere between 50 and 60. It says, it says over 50 screens. So I imagine it's going to be somewhere between 50 and 60. So I was thinking, do I really need tiles for this? Can I just store the data directly, um, in, in the, in the, um, in the space? And then I don't have to unpack it from tiles, which will speed things up somewhat. So I did a little calculation and if I took 16 bit values for an entire screen um that's just short of 2k um so if i have 60 screens that's 128k so that's that's less than a quarter of the cartridge and that contains all the map data so i think that's acceptable so i think i'm going to go down that route where instead of using tiles i'm just going to do it without tiles so let's um first of all let's just copy all of that because i know it's going to screw things up here uh, and turn the tile set off. Okay, and change this back to 1024. And hopefully that just pastes over the top, which it does cool. All right, so let's turn our flexi grid back on again. So we need to adjust the flexi. So this is a, a really nice feature of this version. Um, which allows you to divide the, the map up into screens with something called a flexi grid. Um, and when you turn it on, it shows you the red dotted lines. You can see the screen. So now the screens are, are being stored as, um, as single characters and not tiles. So they're taking up a bit more memory. In fact, they're taking up four times more memory. Um, in fact, they're taking up eight times as much memory because I'm not, I'm not using, um, uh, I'm not using eight bit values. I'm using 16 bit values now. Um, so for every character on here, we've got, we've got two bytes, uh, and these two bytes are going to point to somewhere in this character set. And I've completely lost the map by doing that. So let's not do that. Let's, let's undo that as well. So, okay. So this is, is going to be a little bit trickier uh, to work with, but this can be done um, at the end of the design. So you can do the design all in tiles and then you can strip it down to this. Also, the characters here really don't matter. These can be cleared because this is, this is the character set just for the map. The, these characters are going to live in their own character set. So we've got one character set, which is in Vic memory, and then we're going to have another character set, which is the one I've just exported which we're going to import into the very last bank on the cartridge. So what that means is at any point, and I started doing some work on this. Let me show you. At any point, I can bank the cartridge in, so I can do that. And I can pick a bank, in this case, the last bank. Um, and then when I'm finished, I can bank the cartridge out again. So with these lines of code here, I can fill 8,000 to 8,000 with the new characters, which is perfect because that means if I want to, if I want to copy characters from there into the real character set, I can just bank this bank in very quickly, um, and, and stick them in. So, so that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for something, something like that. Um, so the other thing I'm going to need for this is map. So I've already got some map data here, which I'd start putting in. I'm going to remove this actually. Um, because I'm going to change the way this works. So, so what I'm going to do instead, um, with the maps file, which I am going to import, um, it doesn't really matter where I import it. Cause this is going to go into, uh, let's import it through here. Um, 
this is all on cartridge, so where I import it really doesn't matter. But then what I'm going to use is I'm going to use these load add files to add actual maps in. So I'm going to start by just loading two maps in. Um, I'm forgetting the buttons, there we go. And all I need to do here is I need to say, okay, if I want to load this map in, where am I going to load it into? So I'm using 8,000 to 8,000 for the character set. So I don't really want to override that. So I'm going to use that area for code that won't run while the map transition is happening. So things like um, um, sprite updates, sprite multiplexes, things like that. Those are the sort of things that can fit into that area and they'll just be turned off. Um, And I will load this into, let's load this into A thousand. So this is where we're gonna we're gonna load these maps into. So this is gonna give us a copy of each map at this location. And this is where the phone comes in. So we need to create different maps for different screens. So um I'm gonna call it something like this. Um God. Zero, comma, zero. Map zero comma one and so on, uh, and then here this this will be kind of the same. Okay. So all this is going to do is is load these map blocks in into into the cartridge memory where I tell it to load them in. I don't need to use any pseudo PC stuff um, because it's not, it's just going to be data that's in here. So all, all I'm really doing is is putting a map import in here. So this file is going to end up quite long because every single map is going to have to be imported like this. But what it means is I can then load these maps in this way. Um, now, I'm not going to be able to load them using the string because I'm only going to have a number to go by. So I need to work out what this number is, um, which I can probably get some of there. Hang on, let me have a look at the map loader. Uh, not the map loader, sorry, the cart loader. Okay, so this is where we add files. Yes, here. So fat index. So this is this is the value that I need. This is the um fat index here. Okay, so this is the index into the file list. So the, the cart, I've set the cart up so I can have 256 different files. Um, so all I'm going to do is create a constant here, um, which I'm going to call um, map fat base fat index base. That will be fat index. And what that means is when, um, when we need to load a map, we'll use this as our base and then we'll add zero, one, two, three, or whatever to it. So He's got the balls to duels me. Have you been winning loads again? Quarter of a million is on. Yeah, I need to make something to uh, spend these points on, don't we? The shimmy shillings. Um, okay, so uh, let's let's move this down here and call this maps because this might have to be imported somewhere else. We could even import this in the. Um, there's no reason to necessarily put this in here. So actually I'm going to move that into, uh, into maps here as well. So, um, it really doesn't matter where I put this, um, this defined static bank doesn't affect this fat index and it should return it back to normal. So then the question is, can I export each one of these sub maps in 16 bit format? And that's what I don't know yet. So I couldn't do it with tiles, but I think I can do it with them. So, um, let's have a go so let's export binary okay so it's only going to allow me to export these in 8-bit but i believe yes there is this 16-bit version here in text so this is going to probably export one single file okay so we we need to kind of we need to probably pull data in from here so we'll just use this as We'll just call this all maps for now. 
um, and we'll take a look at what's in there. Okay, so this is huge blocks of data, um, which is a bit frustrating, but um, it's fine, we can deal with that. So, okay, next let's have a look at what maps we actually want. So I'm just gonna deal with this one and this one. So this is actually zero, one, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, zero, one, and one, one. So God knows where that is in this list. Zero one. Here we go. So this is this is a lot of data. So I I, I might find a way to script this because this is um, this is going to look messy, or I might find a way. I, I'll probably write something to um, generate this from um, into binary files rather than this because this is a bit messy. So, but I can write a script to do that. It's fine. But for now, this is this is absolutely fine. Yes. Okay. So. So that's both maps, and I'm just going to move this map into the other section, into here. There we go. Right. So that's both maps now. Uh, and I'm just going to call that high. I'm just going to call this one low. that data in there for now it's probably not necessary but um okay then i'm gonna do the same here hope this is all kind of making sense so you can see m most of the highs are zeros uh, which is fine but we do need to take these into account so i will do some testing once we get this working to make sure that we can pull stuff in that's in the 16-bit area as well uh, but the reason they're all, uh, all these are zeros is because at the moment our character set actually doesn't have anything down here yet. So, but if we do start adding things there, we need to be able to use that. So that's why I'm doing this. Uh, okay, let's give that a, just a quick compile. I just want to make sure that that's um, working correctly and there's no errors. Uh, that's 22 errors, okay. 22 errors, all right, why am I getting that? Oh, because I I started actually doing some work here and got rid of this. Okay, so let's get rid of that. I did start looking at this and then I had better ideas for it, so. Uh, Charles.asm, why have I called it Charles.asm? And why am I importing it? Charles got bin is why I should be important. That shouldn't be there. Okay. Uh, okay. So in our maps, Charles got bin. Still a couple of errors. Charles dot bin. Oh, because I'm not important as a binary. Two errors, simple pi is already defined. Oh, because I've not wrapped them. Um, okay, that, this is fine because the, the only reason I put the high and low in is so that I can reference them um, at a later date. So all I'm gonna do is call this map high, uh, sorry, map low for the top one and that map high for that one. And just get rid of the other one. It's unnecessary because what this is is basically gonna do um, in fact, no, it's not. It's going to be different. Let me think about this. Actually, yeah, I don't even need these. I don't need these because I know where they are. I know how far through the the code they are. Um, so I don't technically need them. I'll, I'll leave the other ones in, but I don't really need them. Because this is always going to load into 8,000. It's always going to load into that. I'm going to pick them out. I'm going to load it into 8,000. It's that simple. Are you guys really up at 2am, are you robots? Uh, so I've got my script to pad out PNG to a large size. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, 
<laughs> Exterminate. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't sleep, so I've, I thought I'd make good use of my time. And I, I have no motivation if I'm not streaming. Like, it sounds really shit, but really sad, but um, I, I don't. I don't have much motivation if I'm not streaming. So this, this is my way of getting some work done. Um, uh, and forcing you all to look, yeah, exhibition is programming, yeah. Yeah, I can't, I, I, I'm really, really struggling at the moment to, to find the motivation to do something. And I say I spent all, all day today in bed. I mean, I didn't get to sleep till 8am or something anyway, so um, it was quite late. NTSC is better than PAL. Oh, I, I, I agree with you on one in one thing in that I really like this 60, 60 Hertz frame rate. I think that that's really nice. And I think Commodore games, uh, that work in, in NTSC feel very smooth. Um, I don't like the implementation on the C64. I think it's horrible because you, it just, it forces you to lose lots and lots of processing time. Um, but I do like that. I do like the smoothness of NTSC. It does, it does look good. The colors are a bit odd though. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the colors. Um, but yeah. Okay. Right. Let's see if that compiles. I should do. Assembles even. Okay. It seems to be working. So let me just have a look through what's if, to make sure that the code is working properly. So this is the location, the load location of all these things. This is the fat address. So I've got a little fat table and this is the fat address on the cartridge, which tells it um, where this data is. And sure enough, we've got the two maps here at this point uh, and they are sitting properly at 8,000 and our cartridge bank 63 is in the last slot of the cartridge at 70 zero. And now I just want to check that the cartridge is organized correctly and it is seems to be organized correctly. Um, I don't know why there's an unnamed thing here, but um, it's not taking up any room. Um, but this looks pretty good. Our static bank is at the end, so this is our characters. Uh, and all the fat targets are in the right place, and these are the fat targets, these things here. Okay, so that looks to be looks to be good. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he did say ST is better than Amiga. Dear. Yeah, I, I, this is the thing. I, I, I like I like the um, the NTSC mode in general um, in, in, in how it looks and when a game works on it. But if you've got um, if you've got NTSC mode on C64, then you're, you're kind of limited to what you can do, which is why you get so many things that are done in PAL mode only. Um, okay, right. So, so how am I going to test this? Okay, so I guess the thing to do is to just see if we can load a map in and how quick it actually takes to to copy that map in. So what I'm going to do um, in our game loop here, I'm going to use uh, this part of the game loop before we get into the main loop, um, just to test that I can do these things. So. Um, so I'll, I'll keep the, the name debug because that's kind of what we're doing here with debugging. Um, but I'm going to put set up a loop here. Um, call it loop. Uh, I'm just going to use some uh, arbitrary position on screen. Um, maybe somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then at this point, I'm going to increase the border color. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to decrease the border color. So this is going to allow me to just see how long it takes to actually do the process that we're about to do. So what do I want to do? So the first thing I want to do is I, this is the only point at which the, um, actually, no, it's not the only point because the, the character set should probably be banked in while we're doing the copying as well. Um, but it's it's fine. We'll we'll just start by just loading the loading the correct bank in. So, um, so instead of using this load bank routine, which I've got here, we 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 don't need to do any of this stuff here. What we do need to do 
is um, load a load file. Okay, so load a file from the car. Okay, so we I'm going to make a slightly different uh, routine here, which is going to be very similar to this one, but instead of a file name, um, it's going to use Actually, that was all indented directly, and that one wasn't okay. And then file by um, fact and depths. So that's the fat index there, which means I don't need any of that. Okay. So what this is now going to do is it's going to, when I call this routine with a number, um, it's going to load that map into um, our location 8000. So that's what we need to check now. Um, so first thing I need to do is just call this um, with a number. So I'll just do it like that. And actually I'm going to change this. So uh, Okay, load far by fat index. Okay, maybe this needs to be okay. This might this might have to be a bit cleverer than this. I don't. I, for now, it's going to be fine. But we're, I think we're going to have to turn this into a calculation because ideally, I want to pass this in via the accumulator uh, and not via this. Um, actually, let's do that because that's going to be quite important, I think. So, um, okay, um, so the easiest way to do this would be to probably use the zero page location. Okay, so I do have some zero page locations that I can use. They're part of this copy routine here. Um, so need to figure out what they are. Uh, cart ZP start, cart ZP start plus one should be fine. Okay, that will do. So what we're going to do, I'm going to set some labels up here. So this is going to be um, oops. Why is that not copying? Oh, there we go. Did I get more rum? No. I do have some rum up there, but I'm not drinking it. No way. So it'd be easier to move from NTSC to PAL if one was trying to make sure it worked on both. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's what you'll see. Um, a lot of the time when people are making games that they'll they'll keep their um, emulator in NTSC mode. Um, I tend not to because I, I, I think even even people in NTSC regions, if they're serious about playing things on, on a C64, they probably have a PAL machine as well or an Ultimate. So I think the, the need to cater for NTSC is less than it used to be. Um, I'll always try and make things work on NTSC when I'm finished, but I won't try and cater for the lowest common denominator. I'll I'll always go um, for the for the PAL machine first, and then and then make it work on NTSC later. Um, generally, you can make things work. You, you, it's only really if you're doing like I, I have a feeling this game won't work on NTSC, at least not easily anyway. Um, Okay, right, so what do I need to do? So I need to do this calculation here. Um, okay, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to store the accumulator in LSB, and then I'm going to load the accumulator in zero. Now to times this 16-bit number by eight, I need to shift this to the left arithmetically, and then roll uh, shift that to the left and then roll the accumulator and do that three times so that's times by eight now so now i have the accumulator is msb 
So actually, this is probably better. Um, probably better the other way around. Actually, let me let me do this. Like that. Okay, so now I need to add. Actually, do I need to add, or is this always going to be in the same place? Table. Where is the fat table defined? Okay, so the fact table is 8,100 because we're looking it up at that address. Oops, so... So actually, I don't... I should have done this the other way around. Damn it. All right. Let me just undo that again. So the LSB will stay the same. Um, and we'll just add... 18 into this here, so and that's the base um, that brings up this location. And that should give us now, um, should be able to transfer that to the Y register, load X with MSB. Which means I forget the loads. Okay, cool. Right, that's that's doing what I need it to do now. Which means I don't need that. I don't need that line. I can get rid of all those crap. Okay, so actually, I didn't need that either. Cool. All right. We don't know what Jimmy Shane's are, but thanks. Uh, they're they're gambling um, gambling currency for this this race that's on the screen now. Okay, cool. Uh, so now I should just be able to do this, and it should load that that incorrectly. So let's let's see how long that takes to run, um, and then we'll check the memory and see that it is actually loading that data into that place. Um, oh, I'm not seeing any color change on the screen. Interesting. So either that was incredibly successful, um, or it crashed. It's just, I mean, I'm going to assume it was incredibly successful. Let me just cancel it out and just make sure. <laughs> So hopefully this should just still run the game properly. Which it does, which is good. Okay, so. Okay. Um. I'm going to click race so it comes on again. So you can have another go. There you go. Have another try. Uh, okay, so this this kind of seemed like it worked, but um, 
Can it just be that it was so quick I didn't see this change? I doubt it, but let's just put that in there anyway. Let's just do it. Oops, wrong buttons. You invented new gambling. How have you done that? Try to see what you've done. I don't see anything. What did you do? Oh, success or crash? <laughs> I see. I see. Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for uh, for the three to one vote of confidence there. For some reason, this doesn't. Oh, I know why. Because I did some stuff and then I didn't actually repeat anything. So, so it was actually a crash seat. So, uh, actually. <laughs> Actually, most of you were wrong. Uh, whoever voted crash was was correct. Okay, it doesn't seem to be doing this loop for some reason. It just seems to be... The IRQ is still firing, which it shouldn't be doing. Um, oh, no, the IRQ will fire. But why is it not doing this this border change? This is interesting. Let's try it with the, the background instead of the border. Maybe that might maybe I'm doing something in the IRQs which is clearing that. Why am I not seeing this? Alright, let's let's run this in the debugger. I'm not sure what's going on here. Hopefully it should just load into the debugger. And it doesn't. Okay, so I have to go and find it in my projects folder. I'm kind of glad I've started this now because this could potentially um, take some time to do. So why is that not loading at all? Interesting. No, I don't know. It's it's like it starts to load and then it fails. Why is that not loading now? What have I done? Let me try the other version I've got. I seem to have two versions of debugger here. They look about, they look the same value though, the same uh, probably just two icons. Okay. Is that working in here? Okay. Does Shalan sleep during the day? I have been doing recently, yeah, Gray. It's not been good. Mm. Stupid body does not want to uh, sleep at the right times, unfortunately, at the moment, which is... It's a bit worrying. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to assume it's mainly because I'm not at work right at this moment. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I, it does bother me a little bit, though. Um, maybe it's this value here. Maybe I need to change this. Let me change this to to that. Well, I don't know why it's not running in the debugger though. That's a whole different problem. Upside down like a bat. Going to be a sunny day tomorrow. God. Ah, okay, there we go. So it is actually doing something there. That was strange. I think it was just missing that um missing that line probably because of the uh. Probably because of the multiplex, it was skipping over that line, never actually hitting it um, outside of the IRQ loop. So this is fine. We can we can go with this. Okay, so 
So at the moment I'm just doing a shitload of delays, so let's get rid of that. Let's go into here. Um, still don't know why it wasn't working in the debugger though. That's a whole different problem that I'm going to have to try and figure out at some point. Okay. So that's how long it's taking to copy that entire map. Um, it's not display I can't tell if this is working because I can't check the debugger it must be because we'd either get a crash or that line would disappear oh it's not at this location oh actually it should be at this location some of it should anyway OK, so that's how long it's taken to load a map. That isn't that bad, actually. So the, the idea is, is basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to load. So that seems that seems slow, actually. I seem uh, sorry, this seems too quick. Uh, that stands for file allocation table. So I have um, basically whenever I add files to the cartridge, I use this routine here. And what this does is it on the cartridge, there's um uh, I think it's two kilobytes of the cartridge is just a list of list of files that are on the cartridge and where they are, where, where they are on the cartridge and where they should load to in memory and how long they are. Um, so each file has like eight bytes assigned to it or something like that. Um, how many grays do I use in this game? Um, none at the moment. None. Um, it's not. So I, I've been thinking long and hard about how to make things like particles fade out, and there isn't a real easy way to do it, um, because the the problem is because I'm using char space, I can do it on I can do it on sprites. That's not a problem, uh, and in fact I'm going to have to on sprites. Well, with red anyway, um, but the graphics, uh, the background graphics, I can't really do anything with. They just have to stay black and white because as I shoot over these areas, as particles move over these areas, if any of them turn grey, I'm going to get colour clash with other things, and I want to avoid avoid that. So the files are referenced by name. It runs no, they're referenced by uh, an index number. So so we reference them in the code by name like this. Um, but then what the macro does when you load the file, um, uh, which is this bit here. Uh, when you load the file, it looks it up in the um, the hash table, which is so the hash table is a is a assembly time table that it builds up of all those names, um, and it uses that to grab the actual location on on the cartridge. So it just uh, assembly time it creates this lock value here, um, which can then load it from. Yeah, it's just assembly time time symbols. This is why I had to make this this um, thing so I could grab it by fat index because we we have that index um, in in here, um, which we're using for the base of our map. So I can't load maps by calling them map zero zero. I have to call it like this would be map uh, zero. This would be map one. So if I wanted to load this one, I would take the value one. I would add it to to this value here so i'd load this value add our map number to it and then call that map routine and it should load in yeah no worries i don't know if this is how it's normally done um with cartridges but this is just a system i came up with which kind of emulates a little bit of disk drive and the reason i did it this way is because my cart loader actually has a disk version as well um so in order to make this work on disk all i have to do is just change these settings here so if I change this to D64, it now becomes a um, a disk loader instead, and it will store those files on the disk with those names, um, and you can load them using the same same uh, same format. And that's the idea, anyway. There's there's a few things I I would need to change to get it to work fully um, on disk, but it's kind of how it's set up at the moment. Right, I'm going to take a quick break, guys. When I come back, I'm going to figure out why that um. Why that debugger's not doing what it should be doing? Uh, no, just kind of concept of cart memory. That yeah, it is. It is. It is different. But I, I think it's. Um, I think it works quite well at like this because what it, what it does as well is it handles 
um, files that split over banks. So you can you can have a file um, that sits half in one bank and half in another bank. So you just you basically it's all just one continuous stream of data, and you just have pointers to where that data starts and where it ends. And then the cart loader just handles loading in the right bank at the right time to to load those things in. So, all right, back in a few minutes, guys. Be right back. Don't worry, I won't fall asleep. <laughs> I'm wide awake, absolutely wide awake. Uh, oops. Okay, right. Um... Uh, okay, so what was I doing? Just check in if this i want to see if this is actually working properly so i'm going to stick a breakpoint in here and i'm going to go and check the memory at that location so actually let me change the loader a little bit so um here's our boot here um we're jumping straight into title screen um type screen ah oh, it's fine i'll i can press fire it's fine i was just thinking it'd be nice to go straight into the game and not see the title screen every time but it's it's more effort than it's really worth I'm a bit slow what's going on now oh what if i changed damn it Kind of so. oh, there we go. I deleted a line. It's also bloody cold with this thing on. <laughs> okay, so at this point, apparently, it's loaded all our data in. So I, I want to, um, I want to check the memory at this location. Okay, it doesn't look like it's loaded it in. No, I see that the memory is still in this zero FF pattern everywhere, so I don't think that's loaded in correctly at all. So let's have a look again. Okay, so this is the problem. We're loading by fat index, and that means that we're loading the first fat index in, and that's not what we want. What we actually want is to load in, uh, what's it, map, fat index base. Uh, plus our map value to zero. So, what is this? Close encounters. <laughs> I thought I recognized it. <laughs> Try and get this to work. Oh, why is it not working now? Reference to not yet defined symbol. Ah, uh, okay. So, we're trying to load this in the game loop, but our map loaders, our maps, is loaded in somewhere else. Okay, it's fine. We can load these. We can load them anywhere, basically, before the game code. So I'm going to load them here. Breakpoint. This feels better. The whole screen is being filled. So this is kind of what it's better. It's better to take a full screen because what it's doing is copying um, about two thousand bytes from cartridge to normal memory. So hopefully, if I look at this location there, um, I see one two five five. So let me go and check the maps. One two five five. Okay, so it has loaded that data in. That's perfect. <laughs> Now, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to pad this this bit out here. Now, the reason I'm going to pad this out is because this isn't exactly 1,024 bytes. This is actually, uh, what would it be? It'd be 960. So I need to add 64 bytes on the end here. And that's just going to make addressing this a little bit easier. Um, so if I just put a 1 there, um, 
just for test purposes. I should see that one at A400 when I run this. So break point, okay, so a thousand is correct and a four hundred has the one there, so that's fine. So everything's working fine in that map probably, and that's that's relatively quick. I mean it's not it, it's not the fastest in the world. If I do uh pop watch reset uh and then go let's stop watch again. So it's taken that many cycles. So let's have a look. How many cycles is it per frame? Um, I can't remember how many cycles per frame the C64 is. So hang on. C64 power cycles per frame. So 19,656 cycles per frame. Um, so actually we're taking quite a few frames to do this. Um, seven frames it's taken us to load that data in that's it's not ideal it means there will be a bit of a stutter as you hit the edge of the screen but it's it's probably acceptable actually it's probably just about, oh hang on one thing i didn't count for there actually is that's exactly seven frames because of where this break is whereas what i should have done really was done a break here and then a break here so it'll be less than seven it'll be six point something 63 per line yeah it is 63 per line i just couldn't remember exactly how many lines there were on the, on the screen um <laughs> i forgot all about that follow <laughs> thanks for the follow andres welcome to the stream dude bit of late night uh a bit of late night coding okay so let, let's do that again um, it's probably going to be a bit less so i think it's it's going to be between six and seven it's going to be more than six but less less than seven so this is this is a handy way of uh timing uh functions as well by the way very very useful thing to to do so what you do is you type stopwatch reset on your first break uh, well, I think you can use just use SW actually. I don't really need to. Yeah, there you go. Um, then you go, and then on your next break, you can just read the value. So it's actually one hundred twenty-four thousand uh, cycles. Which if I do that in here, is yeah six six point three. So it's it's about what I expected. Um, now there might be ways to speed this up because it is using um, the cart loaded code to do this. Um, let's just have a look at the cart loader code and see what it's actually doing. Um, so this is the copy routine. Um, and it does bank everything out um, to copy. So it loads, loads of value and then stores it at the destination. But in doing so, it does have to bank everything out. So if we got rid of that, it would be a little bit faster. Um, but I'm not too fussed because I, I fully expected this to be a little bit slower, so that's fine. But I want to I want to time the whole thing. I want to see how quick it takes to to actually load all those fonts in as well. So yeah, Cosman is London. He's he um he works at the same company I do, or well, same building I do, same sort sort of the same company that I do. Okay, so we know this takes about six six. I'm going. In fact, I'm going to put a little note in here to say that this takes uh, about six point three frames. So we don't need these border colors because these are kind of useless for us. But now at this point, we have we have all the data we need to generate the next screen. So the next step here is going to be um to take this data 
and to convert it into um, 8 bit values, and in doing so, building new elements in the font as we move along. So, this is where it's going to get a little bit a little bit tricky. So, um, I'm going to start by um, just setting an offset, which is 53 at the moment. Uh, this will be set in, in code somewhere, but for now, we'll, we'll just set it here. Um, Actually, I wonder would this be better done done in another file? Maybe this, maybe we sh the map loader should be doing this. Then I can keep track of it a bit easier. Yeah, let's let's. Let me think about this. Okay. All right, one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly check how how fast. So let me put the these back in. I want to see how quickly it can bank in, um, bank in the character set. So I need because uh, I want to know if I need to load the character set into memory and keep it there. Um, um, <laughs> I'm the janitor. He's not the janitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh god Cosmin Oh dear He's not the janitor So we're going to switch this bank Then we're going to um, Load the accumulator With our bank number Which is 3F We're going to call load Bank? Is it just load bank? Yeah. I want to see how quickly it actually does this load bank, and if when it does the load bank, is the is the date actually where I want it to be? Um. So I'm not gonna call. I'm not gonna set the values in zero one here. I'm just gonna load the bank in and then stop. Let's have a look. So I'll keep the breakpoints in because I want to see how quick this happens as well. This is all very experimental. This this might not actually might not actually work. You know, this is all it's all just a test to see if I can make this this flick screen scrolling um, thing work. So <laughs> the <j> okay, <laughs> I guess in that case you are kind of the janitor. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do a stopwatch reset again. Oh wow! So that actually happens in uh, twenty-three cycles, which is super quick. Uh, let's just check that that's loaded, and it is indeed loaded in as well. Um, just want to make sure that that's loaded in. I'm going to compare that against the actual file. Um, okay, so it it looks like we should definitely be using this method to do it and as long as we don't have any code running so we have no IRQ code running that's in that that space between 8000 and 8000 and we have no other code that's running um, then we we should be fine to use um, use it like this and it also means that we don't have 8k of character data just slapped into memory taking up space Um, and that looks spot on, yeah. It took 23 cycles to load 8 megabytes from the cartridge, uh, which is pretty impressive, actually. That's pretty good. So we'll definitely go We'll go with that method. Um, so that's pretty nice, actually. But bear in mind that this is still on the cartridge. It's not loading any anywhere into memory. It's just we banked in cartridge memory into that space. So basically, we, we, we're going to bank in that the, the font set here. Then we're going to do some work with the map that we've loaded in um, to copy this data into the character set as we need it. Um, and then and then we'll bank it out and we'll have the code back there and we, re we return back to the game. Uh, is there a deadline for when you need to finish Checkanoid? No, not really. It's just... Um, it's just something I wanted to do on, on stream. Like, cause I, as I say, I'm not very motivated outside of the streams at the moment. So this was a way of of, of doing that. Um, th this is also why with the cartridges, um, it's really good idea if you've got lots of unrolled code. Um, 
that, that's taken up lots of memory. So say you've got a, a, a four-way map scroll and you do the shifting of the color RAM and the screen RAM uh, fully unrolled. That takes a lot of memory up. But if you can fit each direction into eight kilobytes, um, you can put them in cartridge banks and just load the bank in, run the code, unload the unload the bank. And then that way you're only ever loading in eight kilobytes at a time because uh, it's pretty quick to load in. So this is this is a common approach you will see in um, in some titles that, that utilize cartridges. Um, OK, right, so with that in mind, so let's, let's put some notes, because I, I do want to put some notes around all of this as well. Um, in fact, I'm going to move this into, um, let me, Okay, I don't know what we've got here. Draw map. Uh, I'm just going to push that all the way down because it's probably going to get replaced. But for now, I'm just going to leave it there because I don't want to break existing code yet. So, so we're going to just try brute force loading map first. So what we're going to do is we're just going to load the whole thing and see how many how many cycles it takes. Um, once we've got that working, we can do a quick test to see how quickly we can um, display the new map. Um, and that delay will decide whether or not we, we we stick with the brute force method where we do everything up front. Um, and the fact that it takes six frames to actually copy the map data is is a kind of indication that we probably should just, just um, uh, potentially do something other than just brute force it. Uh, and what I'm thinking to do here is, um, in, so you would load the whole thing like this. This would be the hit. This would be the big hit. Um, and then instead of converting all the characters into the font in one go, you would do it column by column. So as you scroll the screen across, you would you would put new columns in and, and process each column one at a time. Then that way, the delay is only going to be um, once at the beginning, and then a, a bit of processing time per column, which you should be able to fit into one frame at a time. So, um, but if it's quick enough, we may just do it this way. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, you think six frames is still, um, what is that in terms of empty, uh, PAL? That's 6.3. So this is roughly 0 0.12 seconds. Um, 0.125 seconds this is about an eighth of a frame so an eighth of a second so so far it's not not that slow i mean if it's less than a second i think it's probably all right um it might look too bad um, so, so to, just to give you an idea of what i'm actually trying to do um i don't know if you've played checkanoid but i shall show you quickly um the reason i'm trying to do this So watch what happens when the, the character moves between screens. There's that flick as you go between screens. So what I'm trying to do is minimize the delay as, as you move between the screens. So this there, that, that delay between the two screens, that's what I'm trying to minimize. Um, and I'm also trying to make sure that we can use more than 256 characters for the entire map. Um, otherwise, we'd have to redesign the map, and I really want to avoid that. I'm not looking forward to doing this room. This is going to be a pain in the ass. But um, it looks, it doesn't look too bad, but then look at how many sprites are on the screen. It's going to get chaotic. Uh, it's a, yeah, there, there is an easing function, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Not easily, anyway, um, because... I'm only going to have so much processing time to do each screen, but uh, to each each column. Um, are you literally doing this game the same room for room as the original, as close as we can? The thing is, this is uh, sixteen nine, um, so there is going to be 
uh, some reduction. So you'll see with the initial screen. Uh, so this is the initial initial screen here. And if you look at the initial screen, I've got it's just shrunk a little bit. So some of the space has been squashed in a little bit. And, um, you know, we, we, we're we just taking a few liberties here and there just to to fit things on screen. But um, generally, it is going to be the same. Um, um, easing functions, I mean, I've done easing functions plenty of times. There's there's a, a whole a whole set of kind of my streams where I, I've gone over these easing functions and how to do them. But the, the problem is going to be that because I'm not going to be doing um, the, like in here, it's it's pixel pixel level scrolling. So the, the map scrolls one pixel at a time, but it just does it very quickly. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing a character at a time. Um, there's no need to use um there's no need need to use hardware scroll here it's um you could do one for yeah that that's the thing i'm not doing i'm doing like eight pixels at a time minimum so it's i could still do it i could still use um easing but it, honestly the the effect that i'm trying to produce and trying to use the cartridge to do it at the same time it's going to be tricky to get that to work um smoothly um and probably not worth the effort for something that's just going to flick across. To be honest, the fact that it's even going to scroll across is going to look better than most flick screen games anyway. So um, it's just going to be a very fast swipe from one screen to the other. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do know, yeah, it does have ease in and um, it, it is potentially something I should be doing, but um, probably not going to do it. Okay, so here we load the map data. Um, and no reference car set. Okay, so put some notes here. There we go. Six point three. An RTS at the end. Yeah. Okay. I could do one frame half swipe. Then what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a few ways you could do it. It depends on it depends on how this works. So. Um, yeah, especially because it can slide in from all four directions, which is why I, I want to see how long it takes to just generate the map and the font all in one go. Because if we can do it all in one go, then actually sliding in from four directions is fairly trivial. Um, if I can't do it all in one go and I have to do it a, a row at a time or a column at a time, uh, then it gets a little bit more complicated. And that that is where, um, I, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Um, but it all comes down to how many frames it actually takes to, to set the map up for that. Because there will be a pause when you hit the edge of the screen. There, there will be a pause of at least this before you even scroll, depending on regardless of which method I use. Um, using the all up front method, this is obviously going to climb based on on these these values here. So I'm, I'm going to put this down as 0, 0.0 frames because it's so quick. I'm actually going to put 23 cycles. That's how quick it is. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to go through each of the characters in the map um, and convert it to a character in the in the font set. So I need to do two things for this. Firstly, I need to have um, an area in memory which I'm going to try and find now where I've assigned everything. Let me. Okay, so I have game tiles here. So game tiles I probably don't need anymore. So I'm going to use that area. So I'm going to get rid of get rid of that line. Um, and I've got a screen here at screen zero. So I'm probably not going to need this either, but I'm, I'm going to leave that there for now. But basically what I want to do is I want to have um, 1,024 bytes. So one for every character in the character set. Uh, and these are just going to be set to zero or one. Uh, uh, sorry, zero for... Oh, actually, no, is that going to, yeah, zero, zero is fine. Um, zero meaning that they, they've not been assigned, or if they have been assigned, which character number they're assigned to. Um, and this is so that when we load in the characters, we can, first of all, check, has that character already been loaded in? Because you don't want to keep loading the same character into the font. So we're going to create that area now. Um, Actually, where we put it, it does it doesn't actually have to be loaded in through here. We can do it through the map loader here. So, so we're going to have a reset font map. So already this is going to be quite slow because this is going to have to reset this entire font map. But we'll do this at the beginning here. Uh, 
and this is going to be basically doing this. Again, this could potentially be unrolled. This could be unrolled and stored in, in a cartridge bank somewhere, but I'm just going to try it without first, uh, just to see. Uh, and I'm going to have a uh, font map up here. Um, and I'm going to put that at the high end of that, that area so that can fit in there quite easily. Okay, so let's put some testing around that. I'd like to see how many cycles that takes because that's going to be important as well. So stick a breakpoint in there. So the the reason, as I say, that I've got this in here is is to prevent um, get rid of that as well. Get rid of that is to prevent um, a, a character from the font being drawn more than once. So unroll all the loops and put you know i did consider with uh dot cosmos 2 unrolling all the loops but i managed to get them working in the end but i i i did maybe four or five iterations of the scroller and i was strongly considering putting the scroll routines on cartridge but that would have made the game cartridge only so um i didn't really want to do that this game is going to be cartridge only so um that's absolutely fine to do that all right let's give that a try let's see how many cycles this takes Um, so the reason I want to do this now is because this is uh, oh, game tiles not found. Oh, because I'm loading that in game loader because I've turned it off here because I don't need it. But actually, I'm going to leave it there because actually no, I'm not. I'm going to remove it because this is replacing there. I've got this all committed anyway, so. At least I think I've got it committed. I should probably check, I don't know, before I start messing around with things. A laser disc release. Uh, history. Oh, yeah, I, did, I accidentally did a commit, didn't I, the other day? Um, so it's fine, okay. I accidentally did a commit on the weekend, calling it, um, <laughs> I actually called it, um, I wrote the commit message as if it was a, yeah, fake commit. <laughs> so the commit message is completely runs for a different, different game. So I can't remove that. Okay. Right. So that means we need to go to the game loader. So each section has this loader thing in, um, which loads in sections like so. Which means at the top of the game link, we have that as well. There we go. There we go. Impressed I remembered, yeah. I'm impressed with some of the code I did on the weekend. I was I was mildly surprised that that I managed to get what I thought was gonna be a quite complicated piece of code working. Okay, so ignore the fact that the map looks like this. This is just because the map is no longer built of tiles and we're, we're loading in the wrong screen data. So, so it is going to look weird. That's absolutely fine. Um, but what I'm interested in here now, now is can I get a decent value for these? Okay, 7,014 cycles is not bad, actually. So resetting that map is not that slow. Um, So 0.36, let's call it, let's round it up. So 0.36 of a frame to, to reset the map. So that's fine. I'm happy with that. That, that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, that's just three, six frames. So we're still under seven frames, even though we've reset the map as well here, the font map. This is what's going to be slow. So this bit's going to be slow because what we need to do now is we need to go through the entire map 
Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to write it out in comments what we need to do. So, um, for every char in the map, if it's a, a blank, do nothing, um, do nothing, yeah. So if it's a blank, so this is 16 bits as well. So 16 bits, uh, low plus high values here. Um, so if both of these are zero, then we do nothing. Basically, we're going to use the the low 16 bytes to store the actual characters. Um, using Google Online, Cal yeah, I do. It's just sometimes I just type it in there. It's it's. I, I tend to use. I do tend to use this one more, but um, sometimes it's just handy to to do that. I already had it open. It already had the value in it that I'd um, I copied. So might as well use it. Why not? Um, plus, I like to think there's an AI somewhere at Google trying to figure out what people's online calculations are about. <laughs> Which, if they use their data set, they could probably figure out that that value. Let's have a look at this. What if we search for that value on its own? Oh, no, they might think I'm talking about flange adapters. And actually no mention at all of the Commodore on the first page. Terrible. <coughs> That's radius of sum versus radius of gym. Does it really do that? That's pretty impressive if it does that. That's cool. It does that. Okay. So if it's not blank, but it exists in the font map, do nothing. Oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, apply font map value to low. Otherwise, create new font entry um, add font ID to the font map. Uh, apply from that value to low. So this is where it's going to get slow. So depending on how many different fonts, uh, uh, how many characters are used on the screen, um, a page to share, but Google runs on C64, so that would be great, wouldn't it? So depending on how many characters are going to be loaded into a screen, this this is what's going to take. This is going to be the the slow bit, um, but this is what we need to do. So we 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 have to do it. So so how are we going to do this? Okay, so we've got thousand and twenty four bytes on the screen. So we can do this. Should we unroll this? Maybe. And then maybe this should be unrolled. Let's let's see what it's like unrolled first and if it's too slow we can we can bring it back again it's probably going to be quite uh, it's probably going to be um sorry not slow uh, too big it is going to be big though isn't it in fact it's going to be fucking huge okay let's not unroll it then let's unroll I'm trying to think the easiest way to do this Let's unroll it row at a time. So we'll do we'll do um, we'll do it in rows. Uh, yeah, we'll do it in rows. This is this is literally just for testing. So so we're gonna do actually let's just do R. I don't like using whole things for iterators like that. Um, so we've got twenty four rows here. Is it twenty four rows? Yes, twenty four rows. So we're going to unroll this 24 times, which should be a little bit less. 
and not quite as intensive as on, on rolling the whole lot. Uh, and it's just going to make the calculations just a little bit easier um, than, than, than not on rolling any of it. If we started not on rolling anything, we'd have to kind of have a 16-bit character and stuff, and it would just be a little bit tricky. Um, okay, so we know that the... Um, that the low byte is is at a thousand. So we need to first of all grab the low byte. So let's grab that. And that's gonna be plus row times forty comma x. So we're gonna to have to have a loop with x in here as well. We may as well go backwards through the loop. There's no reason to go back uh, forwards through this. Okay, so this is our low byte. Um, I'm going to use the wire register to load the high byte in. And that's A400. Okay, so now AY has our low and our high byte. So the first thing we need to do here is if both of those are zero, then we do nothing and we, we jump to the next next line. So I'm going to put skip here because this is where we're going to skip. Um, this is the value that we're going to be setting. This is the value we want to be doing uh, at the end. So uh, let's put some numbers in here so I can and relate them to things down here. Uh, let's call that A. It's just going to make it a bit easier. This is about as much as I ever plan anything. Um, somebody asked me actually the other day if, if I did planning, um, planning code up front. Um, this is about as much as I ever do. So um, I don't know. It might have been, was it Chromus who asked me actually? Am I being promised to ask me? Can't remember. Um, Rose is a perfect compromise. Yeah, I think I think Rose is is probably fine. Um, okay. So first of all, if that's not equal, so I'm going to call this loop. So we've actually got a name for it. And we'll use these as skips, okay? So if it's not equal to zero, so if y is not equal to zero, uh, then we jump to here. Jump to here. Um, oh, why is it asking for that? Okay, don't want that. You didn't ask about planning. I can't remember who it was. Somebody, somebody asked me about. That. I've heard the word before, but yeah, yeah I, I very rarely draw UML diagrams or flowcharts or anything like that. I tend to draw UML diagrams when I'm asked, when somebody says, how does your, how does your architecture work? And then I have to draw a UML diagram to explain it or it's, or I've already done it in a documentation somewhere, but um, I tend not to do it unless I'm asked. So uh, now can I do these, can I do these comparisons? No, I, I kind of need to, I kind of need to test them both like this. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so at this point, um, so let's just put these in. So this becomes two. Okay, so at this point here, we're doing do nothing. So we can just uh, change that to branch equal skip that is 60 uh it's been a long time uh, since i did um stuff yeah my phones and labels and that's it collecting my <laughs> okay Okay, so that's the first bit. So now I need to check if it's in the font map. So this is a little bit different. So um, so this is going to involve looking up in our font map. So um, 
that's basically stored at uh, BC100. This is where it is, right? Um, but I'm going to use self mod for this. So get font map value. Um, no, actually, I'm not. I'm going to use zero page for this. The reason I'm going to use zero page, and I can use I can use these temp values because these are global temps. So I'm too worried about using these. The reason I'm going to use is because I'm going to need it more than once. If you need it more than once, it's probably better off putting it in zero page and using the Y register. Um, oh, although I'm using the Y register here. Ooh. Um, I have to think about this. No, I will. I will use. I'll use zero. Uh, um, I'll use self mod for now and, and have a look. So I use the forget what I'm doing <laughs> technique. Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> He's trolling your crumbs. <laughs> uh, funny. Okay. Um, in which case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the accumulator, which is our low byte, um, here. Oh, see, I, I, I kind of do need these values on. So I'm just going to call it font mess I'm going to store them in these values because I think I'm going to need all these at some point. So I'm, I'm going to store them like, like this because these are going to be needed. So I'm going to do that and then I can actually use zero page look up here. So I'm going to need some more global temps for this. Okay, right, so in that case, uh, keep that in the accumulator, keep the Y free so it just doesn't get confusing. Um, that means this is the MSB, uh, so I'm going to store that at. But not before I have added a value to it, so turn to zero here so the carry would be set in every case so i do have to clear it here um well actually not necessarily if this was zero it wouldn't necessarily be set but we're going to have to clear because we don't know based on these comparisons here um and i'm going to add bc which is going to give us the um the font map look up here so we could potentially optimize so let me put this in here optimize by re-adding to map data high um, so when i'm looking through this for optimizations later that's one thing i could do so shaman shaman more than a wink i'm a shaman now am i Okay, and that's uh, our font MSB doesn't plus one. So actually, we can do this up here. We don't need to do this down here. We can do this up here. So I can store that at font map MSB.
Yeah, because if we did the pre-add, we could just use these same values all the time, which would be useful. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. Right, so now what we can do is we can look up Assuming that's actually, I should probably do that. This like this, shouldn't I? Um, actually, it's fine. Let's do it like that. There, there's in sequence, so it should be fine. Right. And if I keep y zero before I go in here, so I never change y, then this will be the same. Okay, so now I have the value that's in in here. So if it's not blank, but it exists in the font map, apply font map value to low. Okay, so if this value is zero, uh, then we go to the next step, which is here, uh, which is step three. However, if it's not zero, then what I need to do is take the value that's in the accumulator. Wait, that can't be right. If it is zero, oh yeah, take the value that's in the accumulator and store that here which is the same location that we loaded the low byte from. So now our low byte contains the updated uh, value. I'm going to jump to skip. Okay. Step three. This is where it gets confusing there. This has got to happen for every character. So this is going to be slow. This is going to take a couple of frames to do. Create a new font entry. Okay, so we need to get our font index. So I'm going to create a... Uh, So I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to create a font index, which is going to be uh, the value um, here. So for now, it's going to be 53, but we'll, we'll reset these values to something else. And a font pointer. And this font pointer is going to be a word uh, which points to the exact address, um, the exact address where um, that font that piece of font data is going to actually live in the font set. So our font set is loaded in, let's have a look. Let's load that in. Game chart, so it's loaded at C800. So So again, 50, 53, CA98. Okay, so this is our, our new location. Okay, so the reason I'm putting that in there is so I don't have to recalculate it every frame. It's just whenever I add a thing, I'm going to advance that. So. I'm going to take the font index. So make sure I don't work at work in the morning. Okay, so A is a new font entry, so this is actually B. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. I had font ID to font map. Okay, so that is basically, font map is set here. So we should just be able to do that. And there is a D here as well, which is which is 
here. Okay, so we've we've added the font ID to the font map. We need to apply the font map value to the low. So we also store that at. So that's kind of simple. And then we need to advance the pointers. So Okay, so there's a there's a limit here. So this is in the accumulator. So this is this is good. We've, we've already got the value that we need to implement. So do we need to clear the carry bit there? Probably. Let's have a look. Clear the carry bit. Uh, yeah, that's we kind of do, but it probably means we don't need to clear it there anymore if I do it there. So I'm going to put that outside here for now. Oh no, because this might not happen. We may, uh, we, no, we do need that in there. Okay. I'm going to worry about this. I'm going to worry about these a bit later. So they're the cycles. Let's get it working first. Three quarters of a raster to blit the sprites. The sprites he took almost five. Wow, okay. Okay, so So if that reaches our um which I'm gonna call it now, I think I've already got this values constants. Uh and this I set free charge before particles. Oh no, I'm going I'm to put it, I'm going to create a constant for it, but I'm going to do it myself. So this is going to be uh, 208. Okay, so. Uh, uh, so this is actually going to be CF. There we go. That's the last last available one. So we're going to compare that to the font space plus one, which is D zero. Uh, and if that's not equal, sorry, if that is equal, um, map index so be here. Otherwise, um, all I need to do is load Font pointer zero. I've already cleared that there. This isn't going to be looping over because this is area. If it's equal to that, otherwise, if it's less than that, the carry will be clear. So the carry will be clear at this point. So I can just add so eight. Actually, do you know what? I don't even need to do that because. No, no, I do. All right. Okay. It's probably a quicker way of doing this, actually. Uh, I think four, four, eight, ten. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Oh, no, that's fine. That'd be fine. Let's let's do it simply first and try and optimize it later. I think. Otherwise, what I need to do is I need to set this value to zero one. Store that in um, font index. And this would be uh, zero eight, just get stored in here. Right, so that's advancing the index. So this should only happen. Um, this should only happen once every two hundred and eight characters, two hundred and seven characters actually. Um, so even though this looks kind of slow, this isn't going to happen all the time. This is going to happen. 
um, a lot less frequently frequently than it looks. So all that leaves left to do is to create the new font entry, but I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, we'll create the font entry. It should be fairly straightforward because we've got, um, we've got this here, um, which is the pointer into the font and we've got a, a font map lookup, which we can adjust to, to grab the font. Uh, well, we can use this one here, this font LSB font MSB, um, which isn't being used anywhere else at this point. It's just used to grab these initial values, but we can use those to work out where we need to be copying from and to. All right, so I'll be back in uh, two minutes, guys. Put it back. I'm back. I've only just noticed that as well. <laughs> it's a special, special mountain. Seaman Hill. <laughs> Oh, 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 I thought Tolkien was going to grab it at the end there. No, no such luck. Okay, so the only thing we need to do is copy this new font entry, right? So we've got our low byte and our high byte already in font LSB and font MSB. So this is going to be, um, this needs to be multiplied by eight and then it needs, um, yeah, it needs to be multiplied by eight. So actually this is quite easy. So we can do this by um, just affecting these values directly, like so. And that's times by eight now. So that value is, is times by eight. So what we can do, um, we can speed this up a little bit actually. So if I uh, load, this value directly in here, uh, then I don't have to do this and it will be slightly quicker, I think. <clears throat> um, is the carry bit clear at this point? Um, yes, the carry bit is clear at this point, so I can add eight zero into it and now we've got the font lookup in here so um that basically means what we can do is we can do uh, not that sorry and that goes to a font pointer here. So um, do we need another value? So I'm going to move this Y into this loop here. And I'm going to create loop it's for inner loop not I'm gonna call it in a loop before someone says it's an apple loop give steps minus one I <laughs> imagine if that worked <laughs> So put that back at font MSB. Right now, if I just load um, font pointer zero, store that at, um, let's call it a font by SM plus one. So there we go. Here I can do and that should write the f the character into the font. So <clears throat> mm. 
Now, just for a quick test, so this is just test here. What I'm going to do is then I'm going to copy their data that we've now stored with A00. into the screen uh, I'll just do I'll just do one for a row for now it doesn't really matter that's a lot of code so I'm, I'm fully expecting there to be an error in here somewhere um, let's have a look what happens okay that seemed to work which is Oh, okay. No, it didn't, didn't work at all. Okay, so it's doing all sorts of crazy things. Okay, so let's start by um, sticking some breakpoints here and see what happens. So let's... Let's see. Let's put a breakpoint here, so before the loop. And let's stick it... Well, let's stick one at the beginning of the loop. We'll do it row by row and see what happens. So there wasn't any syntax errors, but there was definitely code errors in there somewhere. Okay, so we're at the beginning of the loop now, so we don't expect anything to have happened here. Um, let's do the first row. Okay, so the first row of characters has been assigned. Actually, this really needs to be in... Um, oh. Oh. Okay, so we have a small problem in that the maps are loaded into an area that is overwritten um, when the cartridge is banked out. So I'm not going to use that area for the maps. I'm going to use a different area for the maps. Okay, so that just means up here, I'm going to change these now to um, 7, 8. So. And that means in our map loader, we need to do some changes. Okay, so instead of A0, it's going to be 7, 8. And instead of A4, it's going to be 7C. 7, 8. 7, because we've got the cartridge banked in to copy the characters, the fonts from, we can't actually write to that area so it's a good good thing that we've put the, the character set at um c800 because that means it will work it might also explain why we're getting um weird stuff there because those values would have been very high would have been writing to some strange values in memory so um let's give that a try now And what we should see here is uh, when the first row runs, um, so if we just have a look at the, the memory here, so this is our first row, one, two, five, five. Um, so what I'm hoping to see here is these first four numbers change to 53, 54, 55, 55. Um, okay, not quite. Uh, but they have changed, uh, and it has changed to 16. It has changed exactly one row, so it's right into the right area, but we're getting the wrong value in there now. So let's just cycle through, see what we get at the other end when that thing runs. Oh, it's, it's running more than once. Okay. Um, it does seem to be copying something there. It's copying something into that area. This is where the debugger would be really helpful. So let me try and get that working. Oh, God, he put this on. His haze up. <laughs> you bastards. Why is this not loading cartridges anymore?
should be loading from here. I don't know why it's not. This fucking song. Jesus. Um. Why is the debugger not working with cartridge files? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, th thanks for ruining my ears. Isn't it loading in the debugger? That's so annoying. Uh, let me just check I can load anything into the debugger that's a cart file. Let me have a look at... Uh, the Cosmos one. Okay, that's loading, so maybe it's sort of Magic Desk. Try Gmod two. I don't think it's I don't think it's that though. It still works from in here. Um, <clears throat> doesn't want to load that though for some reason. What have I done? I've changed something in this file that's broken things because it no longer wants to load that at all. Let me just check what my build script is on. It's my make that make that magic desk cart format type. Yeah, I'm just checking now. It's on magic desk. Hmm. This this was working not that long ago, so I don't know what I've done that's different. Because it works in Vice, but it doesn't work in here. That's the strange thing. <clears throat> oh, I might have to figure that out tomorrow. Debuggers should support Magic Desk too. I've had it. I've had it working on Magic. I've had it working on Gmod cards. So okay. So the thing is, I think for the most part, it's working. This this routine is kind of doing its job. Uh, the problem is, is the value it's writing back into memory is not correct. So. Um, which is which bit so uh apply format value to low okay so that's c that's here ah okay so at this point y needs to be set back to zero again the hell <clears throat> it's not even loading in that anymore oh Oh, okay. This one here is too long, really. By like... Oh. Hang on, if it does this, then this is going to reset it back to zero again. It's not used anywhere else. So I can get rid of that. Put that outside there. 
that is a long loop if it's taking all those those bytes. That's I have a feeling this is going to have to be split column by column, which is really what I wanted to avoid. But I wonder if it's the size of the of the cart. Maybe it's a cart size thing. Oh, I bet that's what it is actually. Uh, let me let me try that. I think if I if I reduce the cart size down a bit, so if I do it half the size just for testing. So if I change this to 1F um, and then in maps in here, set this to uh, 31. So it should still work, but our cart bank will be in a different place. So you'll see this will be like a 3E something or other. So I know it was a while before Vice supported um, full size cart. So that's, yeah, that's doing its job there. Let me just check. Let's get on the values in here. Uh, okay, the values still kind of look wrong in here, but they. Okay, uh, I'll worry about that in a minute. Let's see if this works on the debugger now. No. It's going to be that. It's going to be that last bank. I, re I reckon if I get this bank low enough, it will work. I don't know who that was. Andy, thanks for the host, Andy. Yeah, there we go. It was the cart size. All right. Uh, I might need to uh, reach out to the dev and get them to add support for um, larger cart sizes because that's not good. Um, for testing purposes anyway, that's going to be a pain in the ass. Um, it's perfectly valid cart size. These definitely do work. We had this issue before, actually, when we were doing the charity carts. Okay, interesting. So it has, it has drawn the map, um, but it's drawn it in a very odd way. Um, so this is repeating this block of code, but what I should be able to see now uh, from here is it trying to draw this map continue so it, it's kind of doing the right thing in that it's moving through the character set you can see it's starting here and it's ending here so that that is correct but what it's drawing here is incorrect um so let's just go and check somewhere in memory so if we go and check uh not seven eight hundred it's Okay, so we should be seeing the font kind of flash in and out here, and I, I can kind of see that it's it looks to be correct. It is flashing in and out. It's it's hard to tell because it's flicking between. Um, if I put a break, let me put a break point in, um, which I thought I had actually. Oh, the break points aren't copying as well, so I need to do a few things to get this to work on the cartridge. So. What impact does hosting make? Um, does it just promote the stream? Yeah, so if you've got a Twitch account, it means um, it will be on your stream basically. So your your if somebody goes to your page, they'll see uh, they'll see mine uh, my live stream. It also gives you some uh, some channel points, I think, and uh, maybe some shillings as well. I'm not sure. Better search hits as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, I guess. Okay, so it seems to be semi-working here. Um, which is, it is all right. But what I want to do quickly then, I'm just going to comment this out. Um, 
and I want to in the game loop here. Uh, just this bit wasn't it? I want to put a break here and a break here, and I want to see how many cycles that entire thing takes. Actually, let's not do it in here. That's because we've already we've already set this up in here, haven't we? Okay, so let's uh, let's put a break here. So we can get an idea how many cycles this takes, and then we'll um, we'll we'll look at fixing the actual values because the values seem to be wrong at the moment. So um, and the streamer thanks you for no reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true actually. I always, I always do thank people. I think everybody does though, don't they? Okay, so let's reset the stopwatch here. Go stopwatch. Actually, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be at all. So actually, I I think this can be done in in one frame, in in, in one go. All right, it's a brute force approach. Uh, so it's two point six three. I mean, that's just for that map. It's going to differ from map to map, um, but that's not that bad actually. That means the whole thing happens. Um, let's put the put the thing here. Two point six three frames. So the whole thing happens in in approximately in approximately ten frames. So a twentieth of a second, uh, a fifth of a second. Um, that's not that bad. That's really not that bad. A fifth of a second is not a huge delay. Um, I think we can afford that, so that's good. Um, yeah, I, I had some serious problems with auto host and I turned it off because um, it was causing all sorts of weird things to happen. So I think the PC with 200 frames a second, yeah. 10 frames is not bad. That means you hit the edge of the screen, there's a 10 frame delay, which is. I mean, it's it's not going to be that much at all, and then I can start scrolling the whole thing across. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out why the data is wrong. So the data is being copied here, create new font entry. So let's stick a breakpoint in here. Oh, this is this is where I need breakpoints in the debugger. Um, okay, okay, I'm going to do it this way. Uh, Uh, I need to I need to figure out how to get the breakpoints in properly because this is not good at the moment. Um, okay, so let me build that. That should give me an address where it's at, and then I can stick it in the debugger and we can see exactly what's going on at that point. Oh, it does it on. Oh, it's in a loop, isn't it? Okay. Uh, okay, it's fine. We can we can do we can do one at a time. So I just want to stick a breakpoint in that. So if we go to um, eighty-seven, oh, eighty-seven. So I'm going to stick a breakpoint there, and then when I start, it should hopefully. Hit there we go. Oh, it didn't actually hit that breakpoint on the first line for some reason. And this is happening every frame, so let's try on. It's not happening on any of them. All this code is white. D9. Also not happening in A5A. Oh, this is why it's quick, because none of this is actually happening. Okay. So let's have a look. Let's, let's go backwards through this code and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, so... So it's probably this that's failing. So let's have a look on the first line, 87. So... 
does that work? Okay, no, not even getting any lookups properly, so that's not very useful. But I'll put it in that mode because it's a bit easier for you guys to see it, I think. So actually, it's not that fast. Okay, we need we need to we need to have a think about this. So there's a breakpoint there. So we're we're looking at our character in the font map. Um, actually, I do need it in this mode because I need to see. So we are loading font map O two zero zero. No, sorry, B C zero two, which is our font map. So let's go to B C zero two. And we can see that the, there is font data all over this now. Uh, and this isn't being clear. This should be being cleared. Okay, fucking hell. This is this is really awkward without without the actual thing. So let me try and put breakpoints in these places. So this is the breakpoint for here. This is the beginning of the loop here. So at this point, we should have an empty, empty loop. So let's just get rid of that one. Okay, BC zero zero is not. This is not cleared. Ah, the reason this is not cleared is because this is also in um, basic ROM, which is banked in at this point. So actually, we need to move this font map to somewhere else. Um, so that's fine. We'll just move it to 7400. So we're using that block from 7400 to 8000 to do our kind of map unpacking. So that's that's why we were getting issues there. So I have a feeling this is going to suddenly be a whole lot slower. Um, okay, so let's check again. We've got a breakpoint in there. We've got a breakpoint at the end here. And I'm going to put the test levels back in again. And actually, this is. Uh, C028 because it's actually the next row. So actually let's put let's put all of these rows in so we can see if the map's loaded properly. Um actually this is copying this is copying too much data, but it's it's fine. It's copying too much, but for testing it's fine. milliseconds yeah well we'll we'll see if it's still 200 milliseconds so uh, it was still that that amount of time so i don't trust it at all okay let's uh let's take a look see what's going on so now i should be able to run this in the debugger Here's our routine. Um, where's the beginning of it? So, blah, blah, where's the load wire is zero? So, here's the load wire is zero. There we go. Right. So, the data we're looking at is 7400. This is our map. And our map is showing completely empty at this point, which is exactly what we want. So, then when we come down to here, it's going to look up a value, which is going to get from here, which is BC02. Okay, so that value is wrong, um, which means somewhere in here we're adding BC. Add 80, add BC. I guess this needs to be 74. We'll get there in the end. Let's do the same again. Okay, it was a bit slower that time. Not not that much slower actually, but it was a bit slower. Um, so let's try that in the debugger. Um, so what's our load Y here? Of eight D seven, so we start here. Load Y is here. 
and then this is our lookup edit. So the map is clear. Then we look up to 7402, which is should have something in it, uh, which it should have done on this side, which is empty at that point. Okay, so previously D, there we go. So if that's blank, it should jump to this line here. So let's step through, which it does. So then we're going to multiply those by eight. So if I go back to here, uh, our address is now 0280. So let me check that in the calculator. So the value that we're starting with, oh, oh, well, actually it could be anything because I've already skipped through this a few times. So maybe what I need to do is put is reset this. That's what I need to do. Right. Okay. Can't do any of that. Oh, <laughs> wow. I wasn't expecting a raid at this time. Uh, good night, Akmafin. Hey, Cassiodorus, thank you for the raid, dude. Very much appreciated. Uh, this is kind of a, a bit of an impromptu late night stream for me, so I really wasn't expecting anybody to pop along. But um, thank you very much, dude. What have you been up to tonight? Always interested to know uh, what people have been doing. It's always interesting why people might come to a, a programming stream, so. A bit of a wake up. Yeah, it was quite loud, actually, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't have my speakers on there or else I would have got in a lot of trouble, I think, uh, from the misses. Okay, so 7402. Let's just see what value that's going to pop out the other side. So let's change to 0280, which is okay. That's fine. I usually alert during your daytime streams. Ah, okay, cool. A game model want to be dev, so I like popping into actual devs. Ah, cool. Yeah, it's it usually is devs or hardware hardware devs that um that come in. But yeah, uh, thanks for the raid, dude, and uh, welcome everybody that's come along with Cassidorus. Um, I'm just in the middle of trying out some crazy idea I had, um, uh, and I couldn't sleep, so I thought, why not? Let's give it. Let's give it a try. Um. And this seems to be, seems to be all right at the moment. Um, oh, okay. So one thing I do see is I've got these values the wrong way around. Um, oh no, it is the right way around. Oh, two, eight, zero, one, zero. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah, that seems like it's correct. So we're loading we're loading font data from eight zero one zero, which is here, um, which it's kind of hard to tell, but it is this this block here. Um, so this this kind of pattern here. Um, let's just check that that value is being stored correctly. So let's say store at CA nine eight. Okay, so if we go to this mode. We should see that pattern, which is kind of like this, appear somewhere in here. So and we do indeed see it appear here. So that's good. Okay, cool. So press F11. Yep. Oh, there we go. Yep. We do actually see everything being drawn in here. And see that it keeps going, keeps adding them in, and this is actually working correctly now. Okay, so in that case, why we're we not seeing it on the screen here? What is going on wrong here? And what is this? This looks weird. Ah, uh, good night, Andy. Thanks for joining tonight. I know it's uh, I know it's late. I'm not going to stream too much longer myself. I do want to try and get to sleep before the song comes up, but I mean, it's 
probably unlikely, but I might just sit in bed and try and read a book or something. Um, I want to get this at least drawing the map to the screen. If I can get it drawing the map to the screen, then I'm happy and I can kind of, I can forget about it, um, forget about it for now. But um, I do want to get it drawing the entire map to the screen properly. So, um, okay, so I would kind of expect this to work, but maybe I've got the screen RAM in the wrong place. So let me just check where the screen RAM is actually. Maybe it's at C400. And I'm just kind of misreading where it's at. Uh, uh, it is at C00. Okay, so let's go to 7800 here. So 7800 is where our map is being copied to. Um, and you can see in each, every frame, it's it's right in one map and then it's it's replacing it with another one. So this should be correct. Um, that's what I need. Okay. Okay. Let's give this a try. Okay. So um, fingers crossed. Here we go. If I get this working, then I'm going to be happy and I'll call it a night, I think. Okay. So let's do the timing again, just to see. 70,000 okay so let's let's take that as a worst case scenario for now that's the, it's definitely the worst it's been so far which is 3.5 frames I mean it's still not that bad it's really not that bad um I think I think anything up to like 300 milliseconds delay is not going to feel um, not going to feel that bad and this is what 3.5 10 this is just over 10 now so um this is still like 200 milliseconds so it's not going to feel that bad at all all right let's uh let's go back in here click go and boom there we have it um it's missing this top corner for some reason i don't know why it's missing that top corner but it is um so look why would that be well, at the moment, it's because I'm just copying the map directly in, so. Um, we'll look at this. So even in the worst case, what I can do here is if I can't get the scroll working, and I don't see any reason why I could not get the scroll working now, because I have... I have two screens basically. I have the screen that we're actually drawing to, and the screen that has been converted from a 16 bit values into 8 bit values and the font updated. So, all I have to do is, is shift the data in this screen and replace it with the data from this screen. Um, and that way, we should be able to scroll in in every direction really easy. And I think that's what we'll do tonight um, on tonight's screen. Um, we'll, we'll get that working because I think that will be really, really nice to get that in. Uh, it will add a lot to the game. It really will. Um, okay, so I'm going to put this on zero. I don't know why this is not working. It's, it's missing one byte in the top corner. Um, well, let's, let's do this methodically, right? So this is 24 rows. So um I I'm gonna un I'm gonna unroll this as well. So so I can do this properly. So this will be um this will be a loop of this many which will will go backwards through and we will load the value at seven eight hundred plus R times twenty eight X. We will store that at C028. So as I decrease that, if it's still positive, we can go back to there. Again, this is still testing. We we're not gonna we're not gonna do the maps like this. What we might do is have a few different routines in here. So this is loading the map data in. 
then I think we'll have another one which um, copies all the map data to the screen. So the initial spawn, basically, when you want to load screen one, you'll you'll basically just do this. Um, and then we'll have a scroll with a map in, which will be a different routine, which we can call um, on the fly, basically, as we, as we scroll the map across. But we'll do that bit tonight, I think. Let's just get this working and then I can take a break and well actually go to bed. I'll try to go to bed. I don't have a lot of faith in my ability to sleep right now, so um, all right, let's take the break sex. I'm kind of happy with the, the timings on this. So you can see how long it took because it filled the screen with something and then and then did that. I still don't know why it's this this character here is wrong. Um because that character exists, it's here, it's just not been printed to the screen for some reason. Uh, have I done something wrong somewhere? Am I ignoring that character? Um actually that's just check in memory. Oh, that worked first time. That's impressive. Um, it says it's saying 01255. This is the original data. Oh, it's looping through. That's why. Let's not loop through. Let's, let's draw it once and then stop. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So we're just going to draw the map and go straight in. So what this means is now, um, and that, uh, I saw a question about Sublime somewhere. Uh, where did that go? I saw a question. Oh, it was blood up there. I can't can't read it. Hang on. Why use Sublime? Um, it's just what I've used since I started doing C64 stuff again. I actually use VS Code for most stuff. Um, but for this, I've kind of just fallen into using Sublime, and I haven't haven't changed really. So um, I think something it's not quite right there because it should be. Hang on, let me just check. So yeah, it should be loader load map. Oh, do I need to at the end? Of course, I need to restore uh, some stuff. So I need to. Uh, I've reference char set, so I need to put this back at the end. So, probably need to do that as well, but I'm, I'm not sure. Let's give it a try. Do more second load at 9.30. Yeah, we'll be doing. Yeah. Uh, this is just an impromptu one. This is not to take the place of tonight's stream. Um, there we go. Okay, so the particles have stopped working for some reason. Uh, the yeah, why have the particles stopped working? And the shooting has stopped as well. Um, is that because we've messed around with the characters? <laughs> Not interesting, it didn't play the latest cartridge, I need to open and close it again. Yeah, this is this this stream is literally just because I couldn't sleep, so um, it was just oh no, the stuff is there, the bullets are there, so why is it not running? What have I done? What have I broken here? So these should be working, these should be working. Because the movement is working, but none of this is working. Particles is... It's just clear space. Just probably need to get rid of that uh, debug dummy in here, because that's going to be... That's it. Yeah, I think get rid of that. Spamming everything there. Uh, 
I'm actually seeing particles in here. I must stop loading particles for some reason. Update particles. Update bullets, draw bullets. It's like these bits aren't actually happening. Let's just uh I think they are though. In fact, let me let me just turn debug on. It could be something really simple. Um oh, oh something very odd going on there. Timings uh what the hell no idea what's going on there. Right, let me just try something. Let me turn off this bit. Let me just not load a map and see what happens. So obviously this is gonna look wrong because the map isn't loaded properly. But I want to see it. okay the particles okay I mean it's it's doing strange things but um and we can shoot okay and it's just wrapping around the screen as I I knew it was going to do that we're not doing any checks at the moment for that um okay question is why Put that back in there that's oh, okay that's why we're getting weird uh weird values there so let me try that okay that's more like it with the the rest of time um okay why does loading that map prevent the particles from loading that's what we need to know um Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable interrupts around that as well, see if that has any effect. If this doesn't work, then I'm going to leave it as a as a task for tomorrow. Um, we, we can see that the basic stuff is working. Uh, I just need to figure out why it's not allowing the particles to work, because they're not showing there at all. Which is bizarre, unless. Oh no, they're not going to show there. Unless there is, unless it's working, and the and the, the colors are wrong. So let me try. Uh, D D B F F zero one. Okay, let me do that with zero two. See if that's actually made it red. Yes, okay, it's made it red. But I'm not seeing anything, so so it wasn't the colours. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try and figure it out for 10 minutes, and then at half four I'll stop. So something in this load map is preventing it from working. Um, okay, let's take the test bit out at the end there. Take this side as well. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, so for some reason, for some strange reason, doing this breaks the character set. Why? Ah. Are the values non-zero? Is that the problem here? 
Is that the problem? Is it putting a blank space in, um, but it's not actually using the blank space, it's using something else. If your rail code pushes out too far, it shouldn't do. I mean, it's quite small. It's Let's have a look. I, I think it's not putting zeros in the screen. I reckon if I have a look at the screen data, it's not going to be full of zeros where it should be. Um, so this is, uh, what is this called? I haven't actually put any labels in here. Have I met cloud up? So this is in game code. So no, it should be fine. I mean, it's it's not using much. We're using about 8K so far, um, which I'm probably going to strip down uh, a bit more because I think I think this can be um, well, this can be changed or it can be moved onto the onto the cartridge somehow. Uh, well, no, I can't because I'm using self mod here, so it would be that as well. But I, I think I can optimize this a bit more and save some space. Um, for instance, this doesn't need to be like this. This is it's just lazy, lazy testing, basically. Uh, but I think what's happening is um, it's not always putting zero in that screen. So let me let me have a look. Press that up. So this is this is drawn the screen. Oh. oh, that doesn't really tell me anything. All right. Yeah. See, look, it's it's filled non-zero values in some places um it's put six zero in instead of so if i if i fill uh c090 to c100 zero zero go okay so i've created a, a weird area up there but the particles are working up there so it's to do with the value that it's putting in place. It shouldn't be putting six zero. It should be putting zero, um, which I think is an easy fix. So let's have a look. So if it's blank, do nothing. Um, so actually, if it's blank, we shouldn't be. I oh, know we should be doing nothing. That's correct. But this is the problem here um, because we're adding the value and then we're immediately jumping uh, to here. So. Um, So if I change that to, okay, so let's think about this. So this is comparing, um, okay, I'm going to move this. to here. Otherwise it's going to jump to skip. I think that might fix it. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So other than that, that piece up here, which I still don't fully understand why that's missing. Let's see if I can have a look. So that's uh, C028. So seven is 53. Oh. Oh, hang on. I feel like this isn't actually drawing the map properly. Because the values I've got here, oh, they do match. Okay, I kind of want to figure this out now because this, this is slightly wrong. Um. It's like it's not actually updating um, correctly. So you see in here, it doesn't actually tell me what character it is when I when I have a look, which is a bit of a shame. But um, I think if I clear these, can I can I clear them? No. Okay. How do I? Okay, right. Uh, if I fill to what was the address in here? 
CA97. Okay, so, so if I fill those values uh, with zero. Oh, interesting. It seems to have actually applied those. Hmm, okay. Oh, it seems to be using the right values on this one. Wait, what is going on here? Okay. Mm -mm. What is going on? So this is the index. So when this runs, the screen it should be copying should not be. Let's put the breakpoint in. Okay, so I don't don't need that anymore. That's kind of automatic. Let's put the breakpoint in here. So I on the right file. There we go. Okay, so this is where it unpacks into memory, and this looks wrong. Ah. Okay, I think I see the problem here. So the reason why that one was blank was because of the erroneous piece of data that I added in it in the map just to test the upper byte, uh, not that one in here. So I added this one in here. So I think that will fix that. But the question is, is why is it showing these values and not the updated values? So I'm going to actually remove the character set from in the loader here so i'm going to get rid of this one so the character set uh doesn't exist actually no i'm not going to get rid of it what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this to just two for now um, and then i'm going to reduce this to 256 and clear these so hopefully there's a clear button in here clear there we go I should call it 16 bit, I'll call it uh, base charts. There we go. All right, so this is going to make sure that our, our uh, particles work, our bullets work. We're just going to remove all of the, all of the map charts, and those map charts are only going to come from the cartridge which will show me if there's anything wrong here. And I think there will be something wrong here. <laughs> Cybernoid. Did somebody pick that? No, it just came up. That's cool. Okay, so... So the value at this location is wrong. Uh, which means if I click go, this is going to be a blank screen. Uh, this is going to break point on it now. Let's get rid of the break point. So close. It's so close. I'm not going to go to bed till I fix this issue because I'm, I'm pleased that this has even worked. So, yeah, okay, blank screen. Okay, so the blank screen is happening because it's not updating. Um, it's not doing this bit here in C. So add font ID to font map. So that's this bit here. Um.
Okay, I'm going to put the debug in here again. Finally, I'm going to find this. Um, I'm going to track down this bullshit because I, I think this is going to work. Um, it's so close. It's really, really close. Um, it's just there's one value that's not being being put in the right place. So uh, font loop 908, okay. Because the font copy is working. The font copy is actually being copied across. If you look um, at the button, if you look at this one. So when I start the game, oops. You see, it's... it's Wait. Wait, how's it got that font? Like, wait, how's it working in here? Doesn't make any sense. I don't think that is, I don't think that's the latest cartridge. Let me drop drop the latest cartridge kind. There we go. Oh, it's not actually copied the font in. What? Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, all right. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take a quick break. And then when I come back, oh, I'm going to fix this. I can't, I can't leave it like this. So I'm going to spend another hour on it at least. All right. Uh, back in a few minutes, guys. Bring it back. Let's get this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I want to get nine zero eight. Okay. I need to do it before. We need to do it before we jump to it as well, so it's going to be a little bit before here. Where did I put that thing? So actually, we probably want it before that. Let's stick it here. Oops. Let's close this version. Okay, so our font loop is 8B9. Just make sure that it's... Yeah, if I don't even see the shit at this point. Something odd is going on here. I'm not entirely sure what it is. So that's correct. Yeah, that interrupt as well, that's correct. So if I don't load the map, let me just double check these things. I just need to check a few things before this works. Okay, so everything's fine up to that point. The moment I draw the map, things go horribly wrong. Now, some of this could be to do with sprite pointers, maybe. So let's let's just cancel this bit for now. I'm not copy the map in. Okay, so everything's fine up to that point. But then if I do this, that should be 24 rows. It should be right. Okay. I can only imagine there's something a little bit strange going on with the um, sprite pointers or something.
Okay, no, okay, that's fine. Right, so let's test that in the debugger. So font loop 8b4. What? It didn't get into this at all. Oh, well that was wrong for a start. That could be, that could be a big reason why it wasn't working. Um, but also, it didn't even. Oh, we didn't load the map. That's why. God damn it! Right. What's it just bloody work now? Okay, it's not working, but it's it's getting into here. Now, is it not working because I cancelled that at the end, or is that still there? Okay, that's still there. So let's have a look. 8B9, so same place. Uh, no, not quite the same place, actually. 8, 8B9, okay, so... I'll just make this full screen that you can think you can see in for it. Right point there. Okay, so we get to this point. Okay, so, so this is going to load pieces from the map. So let's go and have a look at the first piece of the map. So the first piece of the map is zero one, and that shouldn't exist in here because so that's going to be the, this point here. So step through. Seven C hundred is the top half here, which is also zero. So both of these values are zero. So if it's not equal to zero, uh, oh, hang on. I think I just spotted an error. Yes, I originally had this as okay. So this just needs to basically be. So if that's not zero, it comes to here. Otherwise, we need to load the lower by check that. I think that's it. I think that's the problem. It was seeing everything as zero. Okay, that's really known. Oh, this relative address. Okay. I'm gonna try, I want to do it without breaking that. Um, so we load this one in. Oh, okay, fine. I'll, I'll do this. It's really not what I like to do, but fine. I can't believe you guys are still watching me at this time. You're all crazy. Boom. There we go. And there's the map loaded in. So if I check now, um, seven eight hundred, I have the new map, and you can see it's actually built the map properly this time. Because um, it builds the map from this side backwards, so it starts here. So it goes fifty three, fifty four, fifty five, six, fifty seven, and then it starts reusing ones that have already been placed in the map. Sweet. All right. It's not even midnight for you. Oh, yeah, good point. I, I keep forgetting that <laughs> you're not all in London. So, all right. So just as a final check before I go, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break point here. 
and a breakpoint here and we're going to time that and just confirm so i think it's around about 10 frames for this whole thing um so let's just confirm that um and then tomorrow what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and get the um uh the the debugger to work with full size 512 um, kilobyte cartridges because uh, otherwise that's going to be one hell of a limitation uh, well only a limitation for um oh it's already zero it's only going to be a limitation for testing the debugger okay there we go so it took 220,000 which is 11.2 frames so if we, if we times that by um was it uh 20 20 milliseconds per frame so this is 224 so it's less than a quarter of a second um which i think is acceptable oh it's the breakpoint's on the freaking ready flag now okay So let's give this a little test by trying to load the other screen in. So we, we had another screen that we loaded in. Um, so let's get rid of the brakes. Just try loading a different map in and see what happens. Boom. Um, there's a little bit of corruption down here. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, I don't know if it's just copying the data wrong or something, but we can take a look at that tomorrow. Um, oh, no, I know what's going on here. It's because I haven't filled out the, the map. So if I go into the map, I've got this fill here. Uh, this needs to be applied to every map. So it's not here as well. So if I put that there. It should be fine. Um, and this is going to allow us to have up to 1,024 characters uh, across the levels, and it should load them in dynamically. Um, and as long as no two maps together take more than 208 characters, um, we should be fine, uh, which is a small limitation, but I, I think we're probably going to be all right with it, I think. Um, it's definitely a better limitation than, um, you know, only having... 256 for the entire map for all 50 whatever screens it is is um cool all right so let's try this and then i'll go and raid somebody so just make sure this loads in without corruption which i think it will do and then we'll go and raid somebody perfect there we go sweet so tomorrow we'll we'll do the scroll effect or tonight sorry um at 9 30 we'll put the scroll effect in but that's i'm, I'm pleased with that it took i don't know how long i've been on but um it took uh not quite as long as i thought it was going to take so uh three hours so not bad and it's a quite neat system because it means now i'm not i'm not you know i can take i can take something like this in in charpad and really go to town with the uh with, with the character set in here and, and have kind of crazy numbers of, of characters um which will match what what's in the game and as long i mean this this first screen here actually has quite a lot of variation compared to other screens um and this is using uh 81 characters so spaces don't count um but you know, ev everything else does in here now we could be a bit more clever about it and say well we could use characters from the previous screen uh, but that would need a bit more thought about how to do this i think having a limit of 100 characters for a screen is is probably all right so um that's not bad at all all right let's let's have a look let's see if we can find someone to raid at this time i'm sure there'll be plenty of people as i say I keep forgetting this is global um Oh, Duke's on. Let's go and raid Duke then. Or oh, Worm Juice, actually. Worm Juice is on. He gave me a raid the other day, so I'll give him one as well. 
I'm not sure. Oh, he's doing the speedrun, multiplayer speedrunner challenge. Okay. Let's go raid Worm Juice then. Hey, Proton Fig, you just caught us at the end. I'm just about to finish, so. Um, uh, but that's that's kind of working all right now. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, that's pretty decent. Um, all right. Yeah, so I'll be back on later tonight. So uh, nine thirty tonight. We'll we'll do we'll do the actual moving between the maps. Um, I'm going to try and get hold of uh, Andy Roberts before then and and figure out um, if we can stay within these limits. Because if we can't stay within these limits, there's a few things we can do. We can move um, these into another character set and and have a split at the top of the screen. Um, and we can shift the bullets along here, which will give us about another what, 28 characters or so. Um, but yeah, we'll, um, we'll we'll do our best to, to get that working. All right. Uh, thanks for coming along. Um, I know it's a bit bit impromptu and a bit late, but um, I'm glad we did it because it's got, got a piece of code that I was a bit worried about out of the way. Uh, and I feel fairly confident it's going to be quick enough to do what we need it to do. So um, thanks for coming along, guys. Let's go and raid Worm Juice Dev now, and I'll see you later on today or tonight. Uh, take care, dudes.